video, I'm going to briefly touch on the lymph nodes, which are secondary lymphoid tissues. So it's, a, it's an area where antigen, which is just some sort of peptide from either um, an, uh, a self cell, so any, any kind of your cells, or maybe a bacterial cell or a part of, of a virus or something that is floating around your body and is trapped which provides an opportunity for interaction with mature lymphocytes and antigen-dependent maturation of T and B cells. So as you can see here, we have these follicles, which are the B cell zone, and you have this paracortex, which I'll kind of shade in, I guess, which is your T cell zone. So all of this area here is your T cell zone, okay? So I'm going to try to make this drawing as simple as possible. Um, it is an important anatomical feature to know for immunology. So I'll briefly talk about it here. So what the lymphatic system is, is, is a network of vessels that kind of, they collect fluid that has escaped into the tissues. So your tissue would be up here. Um, I'll label that for you too. So your tissue is up here. Okay. This is just the lymphatic vessels right here. So they are the afferent vessels. Now what the afferent vessels do is, is uh, oh, hold on a second. I'll, I'll discuss what the, uh, the, what the vessels are for. So the mature lymphocytes circulate in the lymphatic vessels, which are these, right? Um, the fluid component of the blood, which is the plasma, leaks out of the capillaries and is referred to as interstitial fluid. Most of it will return to the blood through the capillaries, but the remaining fluid is called lymph, which is collected in these lymphatic vessels. So basically what the lymphatic system is, is a network of vessels that collect fluid that has escaped into the tissues from the capillaries of the circulatory system, and then they return it to the bloodstream. The lymphatic capillaries join and become progressively larger lymphatic vessels, which are right here. Um, and they ultimately drain into the thoracic duct into the left subclavian vein, okay? So afferent lymphatic vessels bring f uh, lymph fluid that contains antigen-carrying dendritic cells, so antigen-presenting cells, um, particulate antigen, and then a few lymphocytes to the regional lymph nodes. Down here, we have the efferent lymphatic vessel. Now, what it does is it takes the lymph fluid from the lymph nodes via the thoracic duct into the venous circulation. And now what it carries is antibodies as, that are secreted by plasma cells, as well as the activated T cells and B cells that are gonna be activated in this lymph node, okay? So this area right here is your lymph node. Um, it's, it, basically what it is is the site of T cell and B cell antibody responses to a specific antigen that comes in through this uh, afferent vein. So antigen is going to come in right here. Antigen and other types of particulate. Um, and then this is going to provide kind of a site where lymphocytes can interact with antigens and antigen presenting cells, um, especially the interdigitating uh, uh, dendritic cells. Um, so the lymph node structure is kind of just bean shaped. It has sinuses, afferent and efferent lymphatic vessels, blood vessels, and then it has this so it has the outer cortex here your follicles your paracortex and then on the inside here is called the medulla i will label that in green so this is the medulla um, so what the medulla is is just phagocytic macrophages antibody secreting plasma cells and some activated memory t-cells and b-cells that are moving to the efferent lymph so think about it like this you have what color haven't I used yet? Um, light, I'll just use light blue to represent kind of the afferent. So we, let's say you have this antigen leaking in here. So this is all just antigen. It's going to come in, come all over the place here. It's going to move in through the lymph node. So first off, it's going to stop in the B cell zone. So the B cells are going to have a chance to bind to this and see if the receptors match it, which I'll talk more about that later. But what's important is that the B cells are going to interact with this antigen. Then it might move into the T cell zone, right? So the T cells, the B cells might, um, will activate the T cells. So B cells will actually move into the zone here. And the way that the antigen gets into the B cell zone is through dendritic cells. 
um, but that's for a whole nother video. And yeah, so it'll go through here and then once the cells all become activated, they will go in here and then these cells will leave through the efferent vein. And then through the efferent vein, they're, like I said before, they're going to um, take lymph fluid from this lymph node to the thoracic duct into the venous circulation. So the carried antibodies secreted by plasma cells as well as activated memory T cells and B cells uh, distributing the effector cells, so the effector cells that didn't become memory T cells and B cells um, through the body, and then it, that helps you fight infection. So that is the uh, shape or the anatomical function of the lymph node. So it is important to know this, like I said. But what the the easy way to remember it is that this this fluid that's leaked out of your veins or your blood vessels comes into these lymphatic vessels through these afferent tubes. Okay. Then they interact in the B cell zone, which then activates some T cells. They go to the medulla before ultimately leaving your body through the thoracic duct and the left subclaving vein. And then they travel your body looking for other uh, areas in the veins and in the tissues that are expressing this particular antigen, right? Because each, um, each antibody recognizes a particular antigen. So after all of this clonal expansion that's occurring in the B cell and T cell zone, you're going to have a bunch of effector T cells and B cells that are going out looking for that antigen. So they combined it and then you have some sort of immune response.